Hi, it's Lindley Oz. And before I share the video here with you, there are a couple of important things I want to discuss. Well, I guess you're already watching the video, but you know what I mean. Before I share the news that I have, there are a few important things I want to discuss with you. First and foremost, I have been receiving emails from many people who are very depressed. Uh, health problems, financial problems, the death of a loved one, alone, you know, they're, they're alone and lonely, they don't have anybody, um, even people having thoughts of taking their own lives. So many things, you just don't think of those things. You're just so busy. So this is a reminder that we need to pray for these people. We really, really need to pray for these people and reach out to people when we're aware of such a situation, but do pray for them. It's very important. People are hurting, so please keep people that are hurting and going through difficult situations in their lives in your prayers. It's just really, really sad, and like I said, we really need to remember these people. I know, as I just mentioned, that we just sometimes get caught up in the rush of everything going on and we don't think of that. And thus as to why I'm reminding you right now in this video. I also want those of you who have been giving to the ministry to know that I have been using some of the gifts I have received to bless these people who are genuinely in a crisis. So your gifts are blessing those who are in a crisis and just helping them and relieving them of some of their stress. And I just want you to know that. So God bless you for your gifts. And I understand not everybody's been able to give and that's okay. Uh, I do appreciate your prayers that you offer up for this ministry, for my family, for me and for other people. So God bless you. If you're able to give to the ministry, you can do so via PayPal. The link is below the video. If you don't use PayPal or don't feel comfortable doing it that way, I do have a PO box. You can send a check or money order. That information is also posted below this video. And again, those of you who have been able to give, I just want to thank you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for your gifts. It is very precious and, and awesome that you've been able to do that. And I do pray for all of you. Um, I pray for everybody, but I pray over the gifts and that God blesses you tenfold and then some in return for being so generous and so kind. Thank you for that. Hello, friends. This is Pastor Benjamin Faircloth from Ignited Church in Livonia, Georgia, and I want to welcome you to the Ignited Life Now podcast. We're so excited about this new adventure in God as we begin to look into the prophetic and the current events and things that are happening around the world and try to get a biblical understanding of what's taking place. Uh, I have a very, very special friend that is uh, with us tonight. I'm so excited and I'm humbled and honored to have Lynn Liaz with me. Lynn? Hello, Pastor Faircloth, and God bless you and God bless all the listeners. Thank you so much for having me on your show tonight. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of kind of odd. I'm on this side over here interviewing you, but uh, I, I just so appreciate the uh, opportunities that you've given us as, as a ministry to share what God has spoken to our hearts. And so... Uh, when we decided to do this, you know, immediately I knew that you'd be the first guest to have on. So thanks so much for, for being with us. And uh, I'm going to have you speak in just a minute. But I want to start out by telling everybody uh, we're, we're just really excited. We're, we're looking forward to more interviews and getting into deeper understanding of current events. As I said earlier, the prophetic reality of where we are. Um, I believe that we're in very, very dangerous days, and we need to have clear understanding and direction of where we're headed. And I believe God's going to do that for us, for the remnant church, by the power of his Holy Spirit. But I want to give you the founding scriptures uh, for this particular outreach that we're starting this uh, prophetic worldview. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse uh, 18 and verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 19 says this, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, 
and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Very powerful words for the watchman, for uh, the hour that we're living in, that we have to tell people what time it is. And Sister Lynn, um, my question to you today, and I know you you interview so many uh, wonderful guests and you do such a great uh, job over at Freedom National News and your, your YouTube uh, channel. Uh, my, my question to you is, you know, where are we? Where are we on the prophetic time clock? Well, you know, first, I just want to, so people know, uh, they can visit me at freedomnationnews.com. And also, mainly, I use my YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Liaz. That's L-Y-N-L-E-A-H-Z. I realized I forgot to mention that when you introduced me. So I wanted to give people that information. Um, as far as what you're asking me, Pastor, I think we're right at the end. And Things have only gotten worse progressively over the years, and they just keep getting uglier and uglier. This nation, it's just gone to hell in a handbasket, so to speak. Literally, I'm serious, it really has. We just see the devil on the loose everywhere. Everywhere you look, the devil is just on the loose. Demons, just demonic manifestations, uh, people not even caring about God anymore. What is good is considered evil. What is evil is considered good or the in thing to do. And if you're a Christian, you're shut out and you're persecuted and you're you're just blasted by people. We see the rise of homosexuality and all sorts of sexual sin, which is now considered normal and great. In fact, I saw an article, and I heard you did a discussion on this at your church. I saw an article. It was like the top, one of the top news headlines, most trending. I think it was in CNN, and it talked about cuckolding. Mm, and it was yeah. this, they were promoting couples openly cheating on each other, committing adultery. And the main gist of it was for, and I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to get gross. I'll keep it clean here, but. Yeah. It was promoting couples watching their husband or their wife have sexual relations with wow. another person. That was the main gist of it. And what that involves also is the um, husband is put down and insulted while his wife is having relations with another man in front of him. Oftentimes, the man is also involved in homosexual activities in this act. Or the wife going out and having affairs and then coming home telling her husband about it. And they were promoting this, saying this mm. is a healthy thing for marriages. Go cheat on your partner. I mean, it's just gotten really bad. with the Abortion, um, the sexual sin, the hatred for God. It is just, it's crazy, Pastor. It's absolutely crazy. We can't be closer to the end than what we are right now, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you're, you're putting it very mildly uh, because the, really the depth of the sin is like sewage out there. And, uh, you know, it's this is not only uh, out in the world, Lynn. This is in the church, too, with, with preachers uh, promoting open marriage. Wow. I didn't know, you know about this, that this one. I know that there's the preachers marrying yeah. homosexual couples. I didn't know about the preachers were promoting open marriage. That's sick. Oh, absolutely. There, there was a program that uh, was on a, a while back. I don't remember the the, the names of the of the uh, the preachers, but they were talking about open marriage and uh, you know almost like this talk show and uh, just openly discussing this this freedom you know, to have a relationship with somebody else. I mean, we, we have gone full pagan, full Babylon in these last days. So I agree with you 100%. We're, we're definitely at the end. Yeah. And what is most sad is the body of Christ sits around and says, well, it's because of this president or it's because of this system or this government person. But, and they are bad. But what it boils down to, and you and I are always saying this, judgment begins in the house of God, 
and it goes back to the body of Christ. The body of Christ in this nation has not been doing its job. Now, there are many of us out there who have been. I'm not trying to label everyone black and white here, but there are many of us who haven't done anything. We, the body of Christ, have allowed these things to happen. We haven't taken a a stand. We've allowed ourselves to become politically correct. We've allowed political correctness to seep into the church. We have allowed lies and a watered down lukewarm message to be preached from the pulpit in the churches. We have accepted it. And funny, I was just talking in another uh, program I was on a little bit ago tonight Mm -hmm. about that very thing, about how People have become so depressed and stressed out because the spiritual battle has gotten so much worse and people aren't putting on their armor. They're not standing up. They're allowing themselves to be beat up by the enemy, Satan and the kingdom of hell That's right. so much that when they go to church, they just want to feel good. And so the pastors of these feel good churches feed on that. And they end up preaching either an apostate message or a watered down message that doesn't have the conviction. And there's a very important formula there that is necessary for true salvation. And that is that we have to hear the truth because the truth sets us free because the truth brings conviction. Conviction brings repentance and repentance brings true salvation. So the enemy doesn't want any of that. So he wants people to just go to church and feel good so they won't be convicted and so they won't repent. And repent is a change of mind, a change of heart, turn away from the sin. So they won't repent. They'll just keep on living in sin and disobedience. They will not fear God the way that they ought to. And they will end up just being sweet talked by these lies being taught from the pulpit all the way straight to hell. Wow, that is so true. That is very, very powerful uh, it, it is a shame because, you know, the pastors, uh, their job is to to teach and disciple and to bring uh, the body of Christ into a position of, of battle readiness uh, to to be a disciple, which a disciple is a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ. And uh, you're absolutely right. These pastors, they find themselves, you know, um, conforming to to the attitude of the church, conforming to the attitude of the world, instead of bringing the people and bringing the church and bringing themselves into the very, you know, the image of Jesus Christ. And that's the only way we're going to win and be successful and, uh, you know, be be full of the joy of the Lord, if you will, and not live in depression, as you mentioned earlier, is by standing on the principles of the word of God. So uh, you, you're right that that's happening all across uh, America and around the world. We're watching these pastors cave into uh, these pressures, you know, to be liked. That's another thing uh, I think is is a problem is people want to be popular. Pastors want to be popular. That's very true. A lot of pastors are just wanting to be popular. In fact, even many people who are well known in the prophecy world and in mm the evangelism world over the internet. There are many of them, of course, I will not say or allude to anyone, it's not my place, who have been taken by the fame and fortune and they've been sold out and many of them don't even realize it. And it's become all about science fiction, Christianity or selling a book or a video or DVD, whatever. And they've been sold out and there are very few of us. This is all I will say which doesn't allude to anyone in particular. There are very few of us who are the real deal. Now, I want to say something else, too, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And that is that, all right, we're talking about a godly fear. The godly fear is the reverence we have for God and the same fear that you would have if you were a child and you were doing things you weren't supposed to be doing and you feared your parents. Okay, we don't have that anymore. Very true. We don't have that godly reverence or fear for God. So here's what we have. Instead, we have everybody living in fear of Satan and fear of what he's going to do. In other words, what I mean by that, how many of you out there listening, do you have something that you worry about? It could be money. It could be something to do with your spouse or your children or your education or your job, whatever. 
maybe something with your health and you fear it and you worry about it and you stress about it. And so you find yourself having anxiety, stress, depression, fear, and worry each and every day. And the way the world is set up now and the way Satan has, has done it now is that we live in a constant state of stress, depression, and worry constantly. And so we have all sorts of manifestations of that. And, and I'm serious about this. This is very true. You guys can search the word and look into this. We have a lot of illness like allergies and heart problems and cancers that come from the demonic manifestation of fear, worry, depression, and stress. Absolutely. And because our body, our, our bodily systems, the way God made it, when we are stressed out and we fear and we panic and we worry, okay, we actually start producing uh, toxins in our body yes. and things like that. And those toxins, like adrenaline, okay, when you get into a state of panic or stress, your body produces a ton of adrenaline just as if you were about to die in a car accident. And you live in that state constantly. It burns up your blood sugar and it destroys the various systems in your body. And then you have the manifestations of that, which are all of these diseases and sicknesses. And so I would ask people, who are you making your God? Are you fearing God? Because we have this whole corrupt message that we're not supposed to fear God. We have the hippie Jesus message that <laughs> we everything's good. Everything's okay. Feel good. If peace. it feels good, do it. Yeah. Peace and love. Don't yeah. make anybody upset. Don't speak the truth. Right. Well, the Bible tells us to speak the truth. It'll set us free. Come on. So what are you going to fear? Are you going to be politically correct and fear people and fear all the things that are going on around you instead of having faith? Or are you going to have the respectful reverence and fear of God you're supposed to have? Because if you have that, chances are you're not going to be fearing these other things. You're going to trust in God, and you're going to put your faith in God, and you're going to speak truth. And by speaking the truth, not only are you going to be set free from all of these things that are destroying you, but other people are going to be set free, and it's going to be a chain reaction of people experiencing freedom everywhere. And right now we don't have that because everyone is in bondage to the lies of the enemy. And, and I'll just add this. Fear, people say fear is the opposite of faith. Well, I say this. Fear is the exact same thing as faith. It's what you have your faith in. So if you have fear, you're having faith in the enemy. And have you ever noticed when you strongly fear something and you obsess over it, Oftentimes, that exact thing that you fear is going to happen will end up happening. If you're really, you're believing that it's going to happen, you're believing the lies of the enemy. Take that fear, that faith you have in the enemy, and turn it around to your faith in God. And let me just say that God has probably gifted you with an insane amount of faith, but the devil knows that. And he has caused you to put your focus in the wrong place. And he has turned your gift God has given you into a negative thing. So turn that faith in the negative into faith in God and begin to move mountains. Because people who have fear and worry and doubt and anxiety actually have very strong faith. It's just in the wrong thing. They're faithing in the devil instead of faithing in God. Amen. That'll preach. I mean, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but fear comes by not listening to the word of God and, you know, listening to the things of the world. And Lynn, that's very powerful because I, I, I used to be a firefighter EMT and I worked in, you know, trauma situations and medical situations. And, you know, I knew of people who, who would just think they were getting sick and they would they would speak sickness and next thing you know they would be in some type of of medical episode that just came on by them thinking it or, or speaking it and uh so the antidote to all that is truth and the truth not only sets you free it keeps you free so lynn that's absolutely powerful you know you mentioned uh about the you know the real deals and and I totally agree with you that there are so many people out there that are peddling deception and fear, and there's a lot of undue stress upon the body, again, because they're not listening to the Word of God, they're not listening to truth. But one of the other problems with that, that I believe, is we don't have enough people that are that are transparent and authentic, that are real, the real 
remnant, the ones that, that love God and love God's people. You know, there's a lot of people, uh, pastors and ministers who who uh, they they love the crowd, but they hate the people. And uh, I, I believe that God is going to raise up in these last days uh, some true, authentic men and women of God like yourself who, you know, they want to smell like sheep. They want to reach the people. They want to touch them with truth. And I think that's the antidote for the fear and deception that's out there. I agree with you, Pastor. It sure is. And people are just right now focusing on a lot of science fiction Christianity. And I understand that supernatural things are mm. are interesting. You know, I've watched that stuff myself, the Christian supernatural stuff to do with, you know, Nephilim and flying saucers and aliens. And I used to even do posts on that stuff. But you know what the Lord did? He came to me, this was years ago. He came to me and he corrected me and he said, that's not where I want you. I said, what do you mean? This stuff's interesting. People are watching it. They're getting interested. And then I always end up with telling them about Jesus at the end. Yeah. He said, but that's not what I want you doing. That's not what's important. Right. He came to me and said, I want you focusing on repentance. And this was back in, I think, the end of 2014 or the beginning of 2015. He moved me into the repentance message, and that's where I've been ever since. Yeah. And so while these other things are interesting, okay, it's not what's going to, it's not what is going to get you to heaven. You know, That's you can right. sit around, you can ask God about that stuff later when you get to heaven, then talk to him about the Nephilim and find out about the flying saucers, the aliens, and all of this other stuff. But for right now, we really need to be focusing because many of us just don't have a lot of time. We have work, we have kids, we have to do all these things to where we don't even have time anymore. We're not making time for God. And that's, that's another place we're messing up. We may utter some prayers throughout the day, which is important, and I think that's great. And we may say our quick bedtime prayer, forgive me of my sin, bless this person, that person, take care of my kids, bless my finances, in Jesus' name, amen. Right. Okay, but that's not from your heart. That's mm -hmm. more of a recited type prayer. Okay, God wants us to take time out every day to where it's just you and him. If you have to close yourself in a bathroom and whatever, in a closet, That's just right. to get some time, turn your phone off, just to get time to pray. We need to do this. We need to turn our hearts toward God and take time out to pray. And I know firsthand how hard that can be, it can be really hard. So we need to do that. And we need to get our brains and our hearts focused on God's word and on his truth and to get our hearts right and to have true repentance but there's one other thing we're missing, and the Lord revealed this to me. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is, Pastor? You probably don't know what I'm going to say, do you? No, go ahead. I want to hear it. I'm waiting. Okay, here's the thing that's missing. Pastor, let me just give by example. Okay. If I called you up on the phone and I wanted to talk to you, mm -hmm. and I talked for 15 or 20 minutes and then told you a whole bunch of stuff and then said, okay, got to run goodbye, never let you say a word. There may be things you wanted to share with me about what I told you. You may have some answers for me to things. I may have asked you questions and never even told you I needed some things, but never let you say a single word. <laughs> I wouldn't hear anything you had to say because all I did was talk and then I hung up, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, most of us are doing the same thing to God in our prayers. We're calling him up on the heavenly cell mm -hmm. and we're saying, hey, God, uh, it's me again. And here's what I want. And here's what I want you to do. And I don't understand why you're not answering my prayers. And I don't understand why you're not giving me direction. I don't understand why I'm not hearing from you. And I don't understand why everything in my life is falling apart. And I don't understand why I'm having trouble with my kids. And, and, and that's all I have to say, Lord. And I just want you to help me and do this for me. And by the way, bless all my enemies. In Jesus' name, goodbye. Click. Okay, so God is sitting there. Okay, then. All right. Well, glad that you know, well, I don't know what I can do. That's what God's sitting there. So, so what you've just done is you had a one-sided conversation. The Bible specifically says, be still right, and know that I am God. Let's just paraphrase that when we're talking about our heavenly cell phone call example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it would have to read, shut up 
and know that I am God. Right. In other words, let me talk, you know, okay, take breaks. After we pray, we should listen. And I know we may not hear anything at all. It may, it may just be a quiet time. Maybe the next time we do it, we'll hear something. You have to tune out all of your thoughts, like stop thinking about the stresses and the, the kids doing this and all the things that are bothering you and just totally think about God and totally ponder maybe scriptures if you have to, promises from his word and just sit there and wait for God to speak to you or, or else how's he going to speak to you and give your answers because all the rest of the time throughout the day, you're busy. You're busy working. You're busy taking care of kids. You're busy picking up kids from daycare, talking to your spouse, making dinner. When are you going to hear from God to get your answers if you don't be still and let him take care of it? What does that mean? Be still and know that I'm God. In other words, that is to say, you are not God. You cannot fix it yourself. I'm God and I can fix it, but you can't. So be silent and wait for me to respond and give you direction because I, the Lord, your God will give you that direction. I will move you in the right direction, but you need to be still and take time out for me. And you need to listen for my voice. That's so powerful. You know, it, it, Lynn, it's so simple. It's elementary, but we become so, um, so strangled, if you will, with stress and life and everything that we're doing uh, I hear it all the time. You know, people say, I just don't have time th th to do this and pray and seek the father. And how do you how do you manage this with all that you do and, and so on and so forth? When the reality is it's not a, about quantity, it's about quality. You know, it, it's like you said, I mean, what a lopsided relationship uh, you just described that, you know, we we go to the father, we spill on him, we we lay everything out and then we hang the phone up and we never wait for him to speak to us. And and it could be the still small voice voice. It, it could be a few days later through a scripture or a friend or, or what have you. God will speak to us. Uh, but, you know, you said it you said it so perfectly. And I, I, I really believe that if we'll just. Let me just be plain. If if we just shut the internet off a little bit, get away from from Facebook, get away from social media, get away from some of the things that are not so important, and just really get at his feet and just say, Father, you know, uh, this is my situation. Yeah, I mean, there's no problem laying out the issues of our life. It's waiting on him. Like you said, be still and know that I'm God. In other words, yeah, just be quiet and let me speak to you. Even if I don't speak to you in words, at least I'll give you the peace that passes all understanding. So you're right. Getting before the Father, that is, that's is—that's an antidote along with truth that will keep us uh, fear, uh, fearless and it will keep us uh, you know, stress-free in this very stressful hour that we're living in. Well, two other small but very important things to add to what I said would also be how many times does God try to call us up on the heavenly cell? <laughs> and at that moment, he's calling to us. We don't have time to answer the phone right. and we just let it let him get our voicemail, which is, Lord, don't have time right now. Oh, oh, Father, yep. I know you're trying to say something to me right now or you're you're giving me a nudge in my spirit to go pray, but I got to do the dishes. Yeah. So we have that as well. God's oftentimes trying to speak to us. Sometimes it's through another person and we just don't want to hear what the person has to say. Sometimes it's through his word. Sometimes it's just a nudge in our spirit. Also, there's another thing at play here. This one, the Lord told me several years ago and he compared it to our cell phones. Mm -hmm. I was talking about to the Lord. I was standing there talking to him. I was kind of a little bit sad because my daughter and I were going to hang out, my oldest daughter, and drink tea and talk, but she fell asleep because I had to go take a shower. And I thought, well, I'll hang out with my, my oldest son. I looked in on him. He was asleep. Now, this is years oh. ago. Yeah. And so I went out to the kitchen and made a cup of tea. All is quiet in the house. Everything's dark. I'm leaning over the stove, waiting on the microwave. And the Lord said, well, you can hang out with me. And wow. I thought, well, that's not the same. And he said, I know what you're thinking, Lynn. It's not the same because you can't see my face. You can't audibly hear my voice. You can't reach over and touch me or have this physical conversation like you have with a person. And I said, well, yeah, Lord, it isn't the same. And he goes, well, 
I said, well, wait a minute, Lord. I said, the thing of it is, is I sit here and talk to you all the time and I don't hear you talk back to me and I'll just be talking and I'll hear you. And he said, well, Lynn, he said, you know how when you are on a cell phone call with someone and one person is still talking, but they're unaware that the call has been dropped on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. He said, and, but yet that person's still talking, not even realizing that a call has been dropped. I said, yes. And he said, well, he said, I'm always talking, but either people don't have their antennas up and they're not listening or they can't hear me because of the spiritually demonic manifestations that have thickened in the high places. And then I thought of Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 about mm -hmm. the demonic warfares and the heavenlies around us. And he said, Lynn, I want you to remember this. He said, there will come a day when people are going to start saying that they're not hearing from me. They don't feel me like they used to. And I want you to tell those people at that time to stay close to me and hide themselves within me. I will be closer than ever. But because of the increase in demonic forces on this earth, they're going to just have to trust that I'm closer to them than ever. They're going to have to have my word in their heart because they're not necessarily going to feel me or hear me all the time as they used to. And I was like, well, Lord, I think this was like back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And I was, I didn't even have a YouTube. It was like the beginning of 2013. Okay. And I was like, Lord, how am I going to tell everybody anything like this? I don't have any, I have a blog. <laughs> but how am I going to tell people who's going to want to know from me what you right. said? He said, that is not for you to know right now. He said, you will know someday, but there will come that day. And when the time is right, you will know. And you are to tell them this. And so I've been telling people that in my videos. If, you're, if you have repented of your sins and you're right with the Lord and suddenly, you know, you're, you're doing everything in your heart, you know, to do that's right. And you're praying and fasting and you just feel like God isn't as close to you as you used to, or you're just not hearing from him the way you used to. I want you to remember that we have so much more of an increase of demonic powers in this world right now, waging war against us, that it's quite possible God is closer to you than ever before, but you have some spiritual interference blocking your signal. And God is speaking to you, but maybe you can't totally hear him. And you're going to have to just tune in extra hard, fast and pray and trust. Absolutely. And that goes right back to what we talked about in the beginning, Lynn, with truth. You know, that truth is your antenna. That truth is the satellite dish, if you will. And, and as long as we stay connected to the word of God and to the truth of God, you know, that begins to uh, uh, to to destroy the lies and deception and the static and all the stuff that tries to block out the voice of the Father from us. And you mentioned, you know, faith and fear earlier. Again, the Word of God, you build it up in your spirit. You constantly study the Word of God. You do everything you can. And, and I know there's, there's, you know, hundreds of people if not, you know, thousands of people that will end up listening uh, to this message and, and they're struggling with, you know, how do I hear from God? How do I balance being a, a single mother, uh, you know, even a single dad, you know, just taking care of, uh, of the family and what have you? You know, the, the antidote is always truth. And we have to go back to the word of God and continuously be bathed in the washing of the water of the word. And, and, the, and the stuff from the world begins to wash off. But, but you're absolutely right. The, the closer we come to the end times, which we are in the end times, but, but the, the finishing of, of the whole deal, if you will, uh, you know, the enemy is attacking us incredibly. Uh, you can't even turn on the Internet uh, without being bombarded sexually. Uh, check out at the grocery store and there's, you know, the glossy magazines and and just the the voices of people talking of their ex escapades and stuff they've done in in the uh, in the private uh, and in evil deeds, you know we're constantly walking in the mud puddles of life. And what you said is so powerful. But we're going to have to get into that place where we just wash ourselves in the Word, take as much time as we possibly can. Again, it's not quantity; it's quality. 
but but get into the presence of God and get that reception back. And, and then it goes back to authenticity and the remnant, people like yourself and myself and others, we're highly responsible. And more than that, we're accountable to God to provide for those listening to us the truth, uh, the strength, the power, the victory, the message of hope. Uh, and, and we have to be authentic before God first, Lynn, then we can start showing people transparency and showing them that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all they would ever ask or think as well. Powerful truth, Lynn. Yes, for sure. And before we go here, because I know our times, I don't know how much time we have left, but um, just a good example, you mentioned magazines and you go to the grocery store and you're forced to see inappropriate magazines in your face. And I know a lot of uh, men who have talked and they'll actually look somewhere else or look up or something or look at their phone, whatnot, to avoid it because they just don't want that in their spirit. You know, they may not have a lust problem, but they just don't want that image in their spirit. Sure. Um, one thing we can do, like, for example, I went to a, a grocery store one day and I'm standing in line and, you know, this is just how perverted the world is. On the cover, I think it was Cosmopolitan. It said how to get naked in public and get away with it. Wow. I mean, that was the headline in the magazine, how to get naked in public and get away with it. Well, I, I mean, I can just go down the street and I live in a fairly decent area, you know, very conservative. And I don't think people really have to try very hard from what I see. I mean, you can't, you see it all just driving down the street. Sure. So there is that. But then another time I go to the store and I believe it was Kroger's. And I don't know if there's Kroger's all around the nation, but there is here in Ohio where I'm at. So mm -hmm. I go to Kroger's and it's that time of the year when the Sports Illustrated bathing suit issue is out. Sitting right there by the main aisle by the cash registers on a big, huge stand, not even covered, is a topless woman in a bikini bottom with a furry coat barely covering her business up top. Wow. It was, and my kids are over there giggling and, and pointing at it. Yeah. So I walk over there, and this is one thing we can do as Christians. Now, when Jesus was in the temple, he got upset. He was knocking stuff over. Yeah. I made it very obvious. Yeah. I did it with a lot of emotion, is the way I'll word it. Yeah. I took that whole big cardboard stand, and I turned it around, and yep. I shoved it all the way up against <laughs> something else that was another stand that was there i think it was like the um there was christian books <laughs> yeah. over on the thing and i tipped it over and shoved it i didn't mean to knock it, it kind of fell over but anyways Oops. i had it turned around so nobody could see it and then i went to the store manager and i made a stink and i was very loud and i didn't like Good. scream and yell i just made sure others could hear me and yeah. i and i had my kids there and i said i am extremely offended and i am embarrassed i said that you guys had this out in the public and my children saw this i said when i come to this store you guys are supposed to be more family oriented i don't expect my children to see things like this and i said i am i am disgusted and offended that this was standing out in the open like that for the whole world to see and you guys didn't even have a cover on it and they were like, oh, we're real sorry. We're real sorry. We'll go fix it. We don't see it over there. I said, yeah, I turned it around. And I said, I shoved it up against something. I accidentally knocked it over. Sorry. And so, I mean, <laughs> the, if the loudmouth liberals can get offended and start blasting things out about Christians and yes. things like that, where are the loudmouth Christians at making a stink? You know, they accuse us of being loudmouth, but we're not. We aren't being loud enough. We need to start, if, if yeah. every Christian in America did the same thing I did over magazine covers, it would be a big deal. If we, if we took a stand against what is wrong and did what was right, and we were not ashamed of it, we stood up for the truth. I even told the lady, I think I said, I said, I am a Christian. And I said, this is disgusting. And my children, I'm raising my children Christian. And children have no need to see a woman's bare breast when they go to the grocery store. And I don't expect to see anything like this. And I also said, if I see it again, I still do the same thing again. And I said, I will call the corporate office and also make a complaint. Amen. Good for you. Good for you. Well, you know what? <laughs> small victories are really important because they're victories in our life. You know, they're victories in our children's life and they can at least see you stand and see us stand for the, for morality and for righteousness, man, I applaud that. And I'm with you. 
Uh, I, I've done the same thing. I, I didn't knock anything over, but I've turned magazines backwards. Uh, you know, if I've been in bookstores and if it's a, you know, some type of atheistic, satanic, you know, book, I put a, a Bible in front of it or some Christian, you know, uh, uh, advertisement or whatever. You know, these th- these things may seem small, Lynn, but they're really huge, especially if we're doing them, you know, in our communities and 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 our loved ones are seeing it. Uh, it leaves an indelible mark in their lives. So <laughs> praise the Lord. I didn't purposely knock it over, but I didn't care either because, you know, I was very passionate about yeah. this and I was very <laughs> angry and there's nothing wrong with righteous anger. And we need to stop being politically correct and realize there's a difference between sinful anger and righteous anger. And those of us who call ourselves Christians with a capital C need to get out there and get righteously angry mm-hmm at sin in this world and we don't and that's why it's allowed that's why everything is allowed anymore when i was growing up you couldn't say a curse word on the radio now you can when i was growing up you didn't say cuss words on regular tv there may have been a few minor words that were allowed there wasn't cuss cussing just on regular tv um, you're just seeing a lot of different, now you see nudity on regular TV. I don't even watch regular TV. I don't watch TV at all, to be honest, unless I'm watching a minister or something. I don't nah. mess with it. It's why do I want anything to do with the world? Call me a hermit. I don't care. I am. I, I don't even, I spend most of my time just with the Lord or doing my work and stuff like that. I don't, I don't have any desire to be part of the things in this world at all. Nothing, none of it. I don't even want to look like the world. The Bible tells us not to even look or have any appearance of the world. And I don't. I don't want to watch what the world puts out there. I don't care if it looks like an angel of light or not. I guarantee it's not. No, you're absolutely right. I'm the same way. My family, you know, we have a good time uh, just kind of being like the little house on the prairie, you know, uh, we, we just enjoy one another. And that's missing today. Uh, we're so full of uh, chasing after social media and uh, all the other entrapments that are out there. And so wholesome, good living is is uh, very hard to find, especially in, in Christian homes. So, yeah, it's great to hear that. And uh, I just that blesses me, you know, to see you take a stand. And I believe that many others should do that. Again, you know, small victories matter a lot and they matter a lot to to the people that we're influencing. Again, our children, you know, we're one generation away from losing Christianity. I mean, we are we are just watching Christianity on a huge decline in America and worldwide. And uh, if we could just get enough people to stand up, I'm not talking about making America great again. I'm not talking about churning, uh, you know, the republic into this and, and, and the nation around. But if I can do something in my community, if I can if I can establish the kingdom of God somewhere in my daily walk, in somebody's life, then I'm doing kingdom business. You know, I'm, I'm doing what the king wants me to do. So, wow, powerful, powerful truths. Uh, Lynn, we just got a couple more minutes here. I know we could talk probably for hours, uh, but I just want you to kind of, you know, recap and, and you know, share your, your final thoughts with everybody listening and, and uh, just, hey, where do we go from here? Now that we know we're at the end, you know, and we understand the signs and times and, and things we need to do, uh, you know, how do we do it and, and what do we do from here? Well, There's no doubt about it. We need to, number one, look at our own sin and look at ourselves. And we need to also go to God and ask him to reveal any areas of unrepentant sin in our lives. And we need to be brutally honest with ourselves about our sin. And we need to ask God to forgive us. And we need to repent. Now, I get comments on this all the time when I when I give this message. People believe that I'm saying we're supposed to be uh, sin free and perfect like mm-hmm. Jesus, or we're all going to hell. I am not saying that. I'm talking about sins of omission. I'm talking about living in a state of unrepentant sin and just live, living in it and not repenting for it. I'm not talking about making mistakes. We miss the mark and make mistakes yes. frequently. Yeah. I'm not talking about oh. Let's see, you you got mad today at somebody and you slipped and you said a cuss word. 
I'm not talking about that. Or maybe you slipped accidentally. Maybe you never lie and you weren't completely honest about something. You felt convicted right away over it and you made it right with God and you made it right with that person. I'm not talking about making mistakes. I'm talking about living in a life of sin outside of God's will is what I'm talking about. And that is a dangerous place to be. And so I urge everyone out there to give up whatever it is. It doesn't matter. This life is so short. Those of you who are adults, I want you to just think back right now to something in your childhood. And as you think of that thing in your childhood, I want you to look at how fast time has gone by. From that moment as a child to where you're at right now, it was fast, wasn't it? I mean, it all happened so quick, seems like yesterday, mm. right? That's an example of how short this life is. Guess what? The last bit of your life is going to go even quicker because the older you get, the faster it goes. Is that thing that you're doing or things, is that thing that you have in your heart, that unforgiveness you're harboring towards someone, that hurt, the alcohol addiction, the drug addiction, the pornography addiction, the adultery, wh whatever it is, is that thing or things worth your eternal soul? Is it worth whether you go to heaven or hell? Because you're going to go one of two places. You're either going to spend your life in heaven forever with Christ, or you're going to follow Satan and his footsteps, and you're going to follow his lies. Remember, he's the father of lies. You're going to follow Satan straight to hell. God's not going to send you to hell. God came and sent G God sent Jesus Christ to come into this world to help you not to go to hell. But if you reject Jesus and you reject his blood that was shed on the cross and you reject giving your life to him, then you, my friend, are sending your own self to hell because you've chosen to follow the ways of Satan instead of the ways of God. Now, I know that's foreign. We're all born into sin. We're born uh, serving the devil. We really are. We're born in a body of flesh made from this earth. We're born into corruption. Right. So following Jesus Christ and his truth is foreign to our bodies and foreign to our flesh. It's foreign to our fleshly brain and everything else. So we, we have to fight our flesh on a daily basis. We have to surrender on a daily basis. We have to repent yes. on a daily basis. You know, we're, we're, we're doing something that's foreign to us, but Hey, if you've gone to the Lord and you've said, I want Jesus to be the Lord and savior of my life. And I give my life to you. If you willingly gave your life to God through Jesus Christ, it's not your life to do with what you want anymore. So if you can't watch that sitcom at night that has sex jokes and um, witchcraft in it or that movie you're really wanting to see really bad that has stuff in it, oh well, you know, sacrifice small sacrifice, I think, compared to what Jesus did for us. Yeah. So if there's things you can't do anymore, you just have to surrender and give it up. And, and you just have to tell yourself, I can't have that and think about something else. Find something godly to watch or to do. Find a good Christian uh, book to read that's based on truth. Do something. Go to a church activity or get together with friends that want to talk about the Lord. Do something. Write a book. Amen. I don't know. But, you know, if you've given your life to the Lord, you gave it to him. What does to give mean? It means you surrendered what was once yours to him. So if I give something to you, Pastor, mm -hmm. and I say, here, I'm giving this thing up. I I'm giving you $100 and it's not mine anymore. I'm giving it to you. Does that mean the next day, Pastor, I call you and tell you what to do with it? Or I call you and say, you know what? I, I really like the color that's on that money that they use to paint in the dollar bill. And, and I just want to tell you how to, uh, you should put it in a frame and do this with it. It's my, it was mine and I gave it to you. Um, I, or I think you should put it in savings pastor mm -hmm. or, or no, go buy yourself a, a nice dinner. Right. You know that I can't tell you what to do with it. I gave it to that's you. Right. 
So that's what we're doing. Many of us are doing that to God. We're giving him our life. And then after we give it to him, we take it back. And so if we take it back and we keep it, then the question would be, and this is a hard one, if we gave God our life, but then we took it back from him and started doing it ourselves again, have we truly given our life to God? And then are we truly saved? Or are we living in a state of sin and unrepentance and living in an unsaved condition? Because you can't have both. You can't give your life to God and then take it back. It doesn't work that way. It's not a free ticket to ride. Amen. Amen. You're right. That's exactly right. He gave us so much. He gave us life, life more abundantly, joy unspeakable, full of glory. And so many times we want to, you know, just give it right back and forfeit it and 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 give up all the the blessings that he has uh, provided for us so absolutely continue the fight the good fight of faith amen lynn uh, that's that's a powerful truth amen pastor amen and i always i always like our recordings together because it's always driven by the holy spirit and that is the most important thing to me and i just want to thank you again for having me on your show it's been a real blessing and i'm honored no you kidding me it's great uh Again, I, I couldn't think of anybody else that I wanted to honor and bless first, you know, when we we had this assignment put in our heart. And thanks so much for all you've done for Ignited Church and helping us get the, the message of warning and uh, repentance and most of all salvation and hope out there. And I'm looking forward to to getting back with you at another time. Lynn, tell us uh, uh, how to contact you one more time. I have your Freedom News uh, Nation News website up right now. Uh, could you give us some more information how to bless you? Sure. You can uh, go check out my website. It's freedomnationnews.com. YouTube, which I, I use the most frequently, and that is youtube.com slash Lynn Leahs. That's L-Y-N-L-E-A-H-Z. And you can write to me at Lynn Leahs at freedomnationnews.com. Again, that's Lynn Leahs at freedomnationnews.com. And if the Lord moves you to give to help support what I'm doing, because YouTube has made things extremely difficult. Now, I never used to ask to give, never had a PayPal until, um, I don't know, July of last year when I've been forced to because YouTube is just making it hard um, to, to do anything. So if the Lord moves you to give, um, you can give to me via PayPal. Um, you can email me and I can tell you what to do, or you can send a check or money order. Um, that information is on my website as well. So that really helps out. And people have really been giving and it helps and it's a blessing. But I don't want people who don't feel moved to do that to do it. If if the Lord just somehow speaks something to you or lays it on your heart, then then you can. If not, don't don't give if the Lord doesn't move you to do it. So, but that's how people can reach me and find me again. That's Lynn Liaz at freedomnationnews.com. And pastor again, God bless you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And I also put your information uh, on the description here in the YouTube video so people can, can uh, just link and, and log on and, and get with you and support. I encourage everybody to support Lynn the best you possibly can. Again, if it's not financially, definitely through prayer, she's reaching the multiplied thousands of people across the planet. And uh, we've got to stick together as a remnant and get this job done for Jesus. So Lynn, I love you and I bless you. And I'm looking forward to the future. And thanks again for coming on. Amen. And God bless you. And I love you. And, and thank you so much, Pastor. Be blessed, you and your family and your ministry.